Hey, what's up you guys? John from Old Running Farm here. Thanks for joining us. In today's video, we are gonna be building the electric fence enclosure for our bees. We are very excited. The bees overwintered at my mother-in-law's house, which was a swarm. So they've now overwintered twice. Suck on that, bees. I mean, don't, don't really. I mean, it's good, good job, bees. That's what I meant to say. Um, and tomorrow we are gonna go get them, pick them up, and bring them over here. So very exciting, but we don't have a whole lot of time and we need to get the fence set up right away. All right, so this is where we're gonna put it, right here, which is basically right in the center of our flower farm. Uh, so I'm just gonna measure out, a, you know, so I think this pathway is like eight feet. So maybe we'll go a little bit past that and then probably about six feet wide, just so we have enough room to get behind them because when you work with bees, generally you wanna work behind or from the side. So we just wanna leave enough room that we'll be comfortable working with them. <laughs> Set this up with T-posts and plastic insulators. You could also do wood and plastic insulators, but like the quickest bang for your buck is gonna be T-posts. So I'm just gonna bang these in into our general area. I'm gonna get these set in the ground and then we can get started on the actual fence portion. We're gonna have a four strand wire here, just meaning we're gonna have four strands of wire. So we'll have these little T-post insulators. And so you put these on, because if the metal of the wire comes in contact with the metal of the post, it'll ground it out and then it won't provide a shock. So a few of these are already on here, but in order to put these on, you just clip this side, and push it around and then it clips along the back. and not wobbly at all. <laughs> all right, so we are here the next day. I was pooped yesterday and you will probably see some sort of difference in my demeanor in today's section versus yesterday's. 
didn't get a great night's sleep, but at least slept. So we are here back again to finish the bee enclosure because we're going to be picking up the bees tonight. And I don't want to leave them out here without a bee enclosure because we've had bears. Natasha, you'll protect the, bear, the bees from the bears? I don't think so. Because we actually had a bear knock over our old beehives up there that were just sitting there. There's a bear scratches over there. There's bears where we are. So we want to get this set up today. So I have my charger on this post. I have my switch on this post. So now what we're going to do is kind of get everything put together. Battery's going to go in here. And I sort of set this up so that we'll come in this side. And, you know, while there is some stuff here, if Catherine will follow me. So when, when we put the bees in here, they'll be set up right here. This way we have plenty of room back here. So if we need to set a box down, we'll be able to do that. So even though it'll be a little crowded in the front here, we'll have plenty of space to work with the bees. And that's the main goal. You don't want to be cramped while you're doing an inspection. And you know, this will leave room. I think we're going to set the bees up right here. And then if we need to do a split, we can put another box right here. And you know what, if we end up with 10 zillion bees, we can probably set another uh, thing right here facing that way. So we have a little channel. And we could go that way or that way. We could if, go that way or that way. If we get to 10 zillion. Yeah, hopefully we don't. So now I'm going to go through and just finish connecting all of this stuff. And then we'll run the wire all the way around. I have a battery charging right now. So hopefully in the next hour or so, we'll get this all done and set and uh, be ready for the bees tonight. What I'm doing right now is I have my insulated cable, which is really just wire. So you can see there's this metal wire that runs inside of this. It's a really hard plastic or rubber coating. Um, so this way it can touch the ground and you can also touch it and it won't shock you. So the way that this is going to work is the power is going to come from the charger. It's going to go through this insulated cable to this switch right here. And then this switch through this insulated cable is going to attach to this wire and then there will be a little attaching wire and this is what's going to charge the entire fence. So this way there's one singular connection that goes from the power line to the fence so that this switch acts as an interrupter so that when we unclick it there's no more power to the fence. Now Last time we built this, we had this on the outside, and a lot of people pointed out that if you have this on the outside, a bear can actually knock this over and then disrupt power to your uh, electric fence. So this way we'll have this right on the inside, and we'll have these rubber gate handles right here, and this is what connects the fence. And so you can touch this without getting shocked, but it'll still transmit the charge through it. So we can undo this one, turn off the fence, undo the rest of them without worrying about being shocked. You know what else a lot of people told us? Last year we had that switch upside down. Yes. So they were saying like, oh, it could fall and re-energize while you're working on it. Which I actually fixed this, which actually it wasn't true because there's, so there's a locking nut right here and this doesn't have enough weight on mm -hmm. its own yeah. to fall. But that was a good point and it's well taken. And as you can see, I set it up. So previously I had this switch facing the other way um, but that did mean that if it did get heavy or something like that, it could fall and inadvertently recharge or repower the fence while you were working on it. That's no longer an issue. So we have this switch so that when we take it off, there's no way that this could accidentally or inadvertently reconnect. Cat break. 
So with these, you take the wire and you just twist it around so it's sturdy, and then you go around one, two, three, four, cut it there, and then start over here, loop it around. All right, so next up is gonna be the grounding rod. This is a copper rod that you drive into the ground and you hit lots of rocks with and it becomes very difficult. It's a pretty funny uh, clip in our first video of me trying to do this at our old house. So I wonder if we'll have the same here. And basically, the way I understand this is, so there's a grounding rod in the ground and you always have a ground with your house or whatever. But as far as I understand it, it also allows you to complete the circuit or whoever touches it to complete the circuit. So you think of electricity needing to be a closed loop or a circuit. So you have it going from, you know, the ground to the power to the fence, blah, blah, blah. So this way someone comes along, me, touches the fence, you're touching the ground, you complete the loop and you get shot. So now I'm going to try to pound this in the ground without hitting any rocks. I would appreciate it if you all wished me luck. A bunch of people left suggestions. Sledgehammer was one of them. Going at an angle was another one and soaking the ground was another one because it would help like move the rocks, so. Well, it rained this morning, so let's see. So far, so good. That's way further than you ever got in Reading. Catherine, shut up. Now. So that's as far as that's gonna go. So you're supposed to get all six feet into the ground, but I'm just gonna hook this up and cut it off. So the way we connect to the grounding rod that we just put in is with this. This is called a grounding rod clamp. So there's another insulated wire that comes in and connects right to here. And then this clamp part goes around the grounding rod. And then this insulated cable connects back to your charger. So you can see this is where the grounding rod clamp goes that I was just talking about. So, so it just goes around the grounding rod and then this insulated wire connects to the other side on your charger. And so you can see on this charger, American Farmworks got this from Tractor Supply. It's pretty easily labeled. So the red is what goes to your fence. So that's the wire that goes and connects to our switch. And then green goes to ground. So that's what connects to here. So basically you think red, hot, so that's where this is where the power comes from. So this wire, if this wasn't insulated, would be electrified. So just keep that in mind. It, what is that thing called? Or did you just explain that? Charger. Charger. This is your charger. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this. There we go. Now you got a nice copper rod for... For what? For pounding in other grounding rods. 
training for drums. Wow, that sounds hot. So there are a bunch of different chargers that you can get. This one is battery powered. So this is the power cord that'll go to your battery. There's these little clips, clip on the end here, then clip to the terminals on your battery. There's also versions of this that just have a plug. So if you have electricity out here, you can just plug it in, which is very convenient. And there's also solar versions. And so you can see it's, it's basically all the same thing. So this is what powers your fence. Same thing here, red for hot, green for ground. So it's all depending on what you want your fence to do. Now in general, the plug-in models are gonna be the most inexpensive and they're gonna be the highest powered. Solar are generally the most expensive and they're actually the least powerful. In order to get a solar powered charger that has enough, that has the same output as this one, it would be like 500 bucks. Woo! Whereas this one I think was 99. Um, and I think the plug-in version was probably around the same, maybe like 120, something like that. Again, prices change all the time. This one was 180. And so the way you tell how much power it has is by the output joules. You measure the electrical output with joules. And so this one is 0.15. So this is really just for keeping raccoons and small animals. This will be for our emu enclosure. So this will help uh, deter any climbing critters from hopping over the fence. And hopefully we have that scene from Jurassic Park where the kid gets electrocuted and flies back and we have some toasted raccoon. Um, anyway, but so this one is 0.7 joules. And so that's basically what they say the minimum is for deterring bears. And again, it's deterrent. It is not bear proof. I don't think anything is really bear proof, but hopefully if we do have a bear coming sniffing around, he's going to sniff, touch his wet nose to one of these wires, get shocked and run away and then never come back. Not working. All right, so now that we are all set up, it's all working correctly. And when it's going and on, you'll hear it clicking and there's a little light that says fence okay. Um, so then what's gonna happen is every time it clicks, that's when it sends a charge through the fence. So it's not like a constant uh, charge. So if you did grab it in between clicks, you shouldn't get electrocuted, but uh, feel free not to test this yourself. Uh, I'm sure if you are setting up your own electric fence, you will get shocked by it eventually. That's just how it goes. So anyway,
thank you guys very much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Please give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and as always, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.